In today's video, we're going to talk about an often overlooked but important distinction, and that's the distinction between information and wisdom. We're going to talk about how recognizing this distinction might help you to move forward in your own situation. Stay tuned, I think you'll enjoy the video. Who are you living for? What are they asking for? Trying to be everyone's favorite, weighs you down every day while you parade in the frenzy. Be careful not to run far from home. Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Lovely Grind. My name is Michael Preby and my website's lovelygrind.com. That's where you're going to find all of my blog posts as well as information about my coaching and my courses. So I hope you'll check out lovelygrind.com and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel and to today's video, which is about an important distinction and one that's often overlooked, and that's the distinction between information and wisdom. Now, in this day and age, we're overwhelmed with information. It's not difficult to find information. At the simple click of a search engine, we can find information on anything and everything, no matter where we are or what we're doing. So information isn't difficult to come by, and that might be part of the problem nowadays, as you see increasing rates of anxiety among younger people who have now grown up in an information age. They're overwhelmed with information, and they don't really know how to sort through it, sift through it, or reject some of it. What's more difficult to come by is wisdom, which is going to involve guidance oftentimes from someone with experience. It's going to involve some common sense, some decision making. At times it's going to involve indeed the rejection of information as biased or simply as not applicable to the attainment of a certain goal or to the taking of a certain path in life. So information isn't difficult to come by, but wisdom is more difficult to come by. And in a healing situation, that's an especially important distinction to make between simple information intake and actual attainment of wisdom. Once upon a time, as I myself was going through a withdrawal and healing process, and that involved getting off of uh, the SSRI Paxil and the benzodiazepine medication Xanax after more than a dozen years of use, as I was going through that back in my mid-30s, it seemed like information was a little bit more difficult to come by on the topics of ceasing medications and what to expect and how to make sense of the process. But especially it seems like now in the past five years or so, uh, there's been just an explosion of information and opinion out there online regarding the topics of antidepressant withdrawal, benzo withdrawal, how to get off these medications, how to heal and move forward after these medications. And oftentimes, while useful, that information overload can serve to confuse people or leave you like a deer in headlights, kind of stuck in your tracks, wondering how to move forward and sometimes scared as to making a wrong move, you become timid because you're overwhelmed with so much information, you almost want to give up. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is touch upon a few important ways that the distinction between information an actual wisdom might help you to move forward if you're indeed working to taper one of these medications or just working to move your life forward after having already gotten off one of them. The first way I'd like to touch upon this important distinction of pure information versus actual wisdom is going to be with regards to medication tapering. Now, once upon a time, there wasn't too much information out there regarding a medication taper. And all that you were going to receive with regards to medication taper was going to be some advice or information from a doctor, usually telling a person that it's no big deal to get off a of medication and that you can do it rather quickly. Well, there's been over, you know, the last five or 10 years or whatever, a big pushback on that, especially online. So now you're going to find a lot of information about tapering online. And a lot of times it's almost going to seem like too much information. Things are so complex seemingly. There's so many different ways you can taper, so many different people saying what way you ought to taper. And you're gonna read about half-lives and hyperbolic tapering and serotonin occupancy 
and liquid titration and all these other things that are useful but might serve to overwhelm a person when they're looking to get off medication. So the information is going to tell you that it's very complex. And sometimes the information is going to tell you there's one way you have to do it or you're in trouble. But true wisdom from people who have actually gotten off the medications is going to tell you there is no one size fits all taper or taper method or taper pace. There is what works for you. A thoughtful, gradual approach that is a middle ground oftentimes between the too quick pace that doctors would have you do it at and the sometimes glacial pace that might take up years and years and years of your life that's oftentimes recommended online. There's a middle ground, right? People get off these medications all sorts of ways. You just want to do it thoughtfully and in a way that's safe, but also at a pace that keeps you motivated to keep reaching towards the ultimate goal, which is to reach zero, get off these medications and move forward with your life. That's wisdom coming from someone who's now been off these medications for you know, over 10 years. And I've seen many others get off them all sorts of ways. So that's one way that there's often a distinction between information and wisdom. And that's with regards to taper. Another important way that this distinction applies, this distinction between information and wisdom is going to be with regards to some of the worst case scenario symptoms you might be afraid of, you might have read about online. And let me give a couple examples. One would be like seizures, the possibility of seizures when coming off benzos. And that's something a lot of people read about. I mean, a lot of people are afraid of, and I remember being afraid of it as well when I was getting off benzos. I was on four plus milligrams daily. And again, I used those medications for over a dozen years. So that was a fear of mine. Um, another symptom that I hear come up over and over, and usually if I hear someone mention it, I know for a fact they've been reading online in forums or groups or something because that's oftentimes the only instance that comes up, and that's akathisia. Um, and a lot of times actually people just misuse that to refer to a general restlessness that almost everyone experiences in withdrawal. But in any event, those two things like seizures and akathisia, information would tell you oh, these are possibilities and yes okay perhaps they are possibilities but wisdom is going to tell you that there are such remote possibilities they're so very rare that over 99 percent i would say of people coming off medications don't have to worry about these things especially if there is some method of thoughtful and careful taper employed I've talked to a lot of people from all over and I myself went through the process of getting off medications and again, those worries about things like seizures or akathisia, those are just overblown for the average guy and girl employing some careful taper method. So try not to fill your heads with those sorts of worries because it just creates additional anxiety that can wreak all sorts of havoc on the body and mind. Um, so that's another important way that you can see this distinction between information and wisdom. Um, yes, there's all sorts of symptoms, including some that aren't very pleasant to go through. But in fact, just because they exist doesn't mean you're going to experience them. Yet another way that we can look at information versus wisdom is indeed going to be with regards to information. Information by itself is going to tell you, guess what, you need more information. And it becomes a cycle, becomes an insatiable quest to get more information about every symptom, every interaction, um, every aspect of your well-being, and on and on it goes. And again, while information is extremely powerful and extremely useful as a person works to take back control of their own health and wellness from doctors and psychiatry, too much information can certainly play into pre-existing anxiety, especially health anxiety, and it can become counterproductive uh, because you just can't focus on so many things at once. And that's a part of just general wellness nowadays, period. Like information overload, um, in addition to mindless scrolling, is a real threat to mental and emotional wellness. So information might tell you you always need more information. 
Wisdom is going to tell you you have to use some discernment with regards to your quest for more information and you have to set limits and after a while shut off the information machine for the sake of your healing and your wellness. And finally, another important distinction between information and wisdom is going to come with regards to spirituality and how a person looks at healing. Is it purely physiological or is there more there? Um, and I think that there's more there. Information online might tell you that your health and wellness and indeed your healing um, when getting off these medications is purely physiological. A series of interactions and reactions, reactions to dosages and diet and other stimuli and so forth. And again, while that's all very important, it's my fervent belief that that's not all that is going on here. Um, we're more than just a collection of cells and receptors. We're spiritual beings and there's a deep spiritual healing component that plays into this healing. And I have experienced it myself and there's many others out there who have benefited from taking that broader view of healing as well. Information might tell you it's just physiological and it's going to tell you every single physiological action, reaction under the sun that you might have to think about and experience. But again, using some discernment there and choosing to look at this through a spiritual lens and pursue God as a part of healing, a part of healing from wounds of the past, a part of feeling protected through symptoms of the present, and a part of finding guidance to the future, in my opinion, is going to be important. Proverbs 2, six says, It is the Lord who gives wisdom. From him comes knowledge and understanding. And I think that's as applicable today as it was thousands of years ago. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that there's some things in here that will help you to move your own situation forward. Um, again, information is very important and in some respects we're privileged to live in an age where we have easy access to it, but it is also a challenge. And in some respects it's like the gift and the curse, so we have to use discernment and not only seek to attain more wisdom, but pursue true knowledge as you're looking to get off these medications, find true healing and wellness, and move your life forward. My name is Michael Preby. My website's lovelygrind.com. I hope you'll go there and check it out. Check out my blog posts and coaching options. And until next time, remember to search for true wisdom that can really help move your situation forward. And please remember, as always, to take care of yourself and your dreams. Mm -hmm.